Hi, and welcome to Whole Soul School and Foundation's Mind Body Spirit Fitness Podcast Series. My name is Marie Moeller, and I am an author, intuitive, and co founder of Whole Soul School and Foundation. I want to remind our listeners that the mission of Whole Soul School and Foundation is to educate, enrich, integrate, and liberate the soul. We also support projects and products that are specifically designed to educate and inspire people whose lives have been impacted by incarceration and who desire to live in a more authentic, meaningful, and joyful way. Joining us again today is Sue Wells, who is the founder of Fairy Cosmology podcast on Anchor and Spotify. Welcome, Sue. Hi. Yes, here we are. I am now in summer. You are in winter. And we're in December. Yes, it is amazing how quickly 2019 seemed to zip past all of us and yet create so much change in our lives. Oh, yeah. And I, I feel like for uh, a lot of us, there's been a real, um, almost a backdrop of disruption to the year. I I have actually, in many ways, found 2019 to be quite an uplifting experience. But I'm very conscious that it hasn't looked like a normal year either. And so the year that I plan to create has not been the one that I thought would happen. But what's happened instead has been a real opportunity to... Um, open up and dive deeper into my authentic self, my spiritual being, my soul, and to have the space to do that. And you know, I'm aware also that uh, many other people that I know have found that their life has had unplanned disruptions as well. And I just thought I'd highlight that at the start of the conversation because we are in the end of the year and the end of year is often a time of reflection for people. Yeah. And um, a review is quite natural in our culture to almost encourage this, as well as being a time which is very full on for a lot of people with family commitments and so on, or in some cases um, facing an experience where there is no family and what that means. And so that can create a reflective process as well. So I just want to kind of start the conversation by encouraging our listeners to when they reflect or things come up from the year to to dive a little differently into that and acknowledge where even if things haven't been as they thought they would be where that has perhaps created a space or an opportunity for them to open up in themselves in a different way. And I do feel retrospectively that that has been a theme of 2019 for the population on the planet, opportunities to unveil your authentic self and create a new being. Yes, very much so. I would, I definitely echo some of what you described in your experience, Sue, in my world, in my life over the last year, the same thing, some disruptions, some shifts, some unexpecteds, and at the same time, blessings and inspiration that came through those experiences that, that have landed me, for the most part, in a better place than what I had planned for myself. So, you know, with my goals and visions and dreams for the year, a year ago, I can see that it's been a much richer experience than I was imagining. And I think that that is what spirit wants to bring through us if we can open to allowing that kind of flow in our lives and not get in, caught in the trap of, of bearing down or trying to control or push our goals um, into our lives in some way where as we move more into the year 2020, which is just around the corner, I think we're all being invited to learn how to flow in our life differently. And by flow, I mean trust 
and allow and allow with a kind of openness that's inside. It's kind of an organic openness where for so long, many of us were raised in educational systems and in family systems where I think a lot of the questions, right? We were asked very early, Sue, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, mm. what are you going to do? What's your plan? And so we're, we're um, conditioned early on to be thinking that we have to make those steps happen. But as you can see by kind of what's unfolded in 2019, a lot of us with a lot of these shifts and unexpected twists and turns um, that took us different places than we maybe had planned or thought we were going to go, the blessing and the richness that comes is because we adjust, right? We open to what is manifesting versus what our goal specifically was on the page. And maybe we might find that the vision for us or that we were thinking might have been, we might have been thinking small and something bigger or something wants to manifest in just a different way. And if we can stay open to flowing through that, like the element of water or air, versus kind of more a fixed or solid element like earth, right? Mm. Um, I think we are, we're making more, we're, we're moving in that more fluid way, which to me always signifies the divine feminine inside us. The feminine is the part of us that knows how to flow. And I guess that I wanted to just tack onto that, Sue, um, and you open so beautifully, you know, sharing what this time is, which is a time of reflection. And um, also, it's also inviting our imagination and our ability to create and to manifest and to um, awaken more fully to our power as conscious creators as we're moving through this month. And we're just almost to the other side of December, which is January 1st, 2020, where we enter an entirely new decade of creation and experiences. And so, you know, one of the things that I'm thinking about um, is that I'm aware when I look back over the last year and I take a moment to reflect, is that when something didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, I'm also taking some time to appreciate what, what grew well or what seeded in that experience that when I relaxed about it and I let the experience kind of flow through me and, and co-create with it what it really wanted to, to manifest into my experience um, versus having a fixed vision of that, if that makes sense. And, and mm. I'm very grateful. I think I've been feeling a tremendous amount of appreciation. It's only what it, the 3rd of December here in the U S and it's the 4th of December where you are Sue in New Zealand. And, um, already in December, I feel even more of a shift, probably since November, um, since the powerful energies of the 11-11 in November. And as we move into the energies of December, I'm feeling this appreciation for all of it, I guess. I'm feeling an appreciation for all the richness of experiences I've had, the challenges and the um, expansion I've had as a person and as a soul. And I'm feeling an appreciation before it even begins to create itself in January and in this new year, new decade of what wants to birth through me, what wants to be created and co-created through me and through others that I'm connected with. And so that's a lot, but kind of centering the theme on reflection and creation and imagination and manifestation and having an awareness and appreciation all those now <laughs> words uh, is sort of coming into this conversation in December. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear what you think about that. Well, it's actually, you just stepped into a bit of gratitude there as well. And of course that is a part of that accompaniment uh, that's saying count your blessings. And um, we live in a very target orientated society mm. and so I think that um, whilst that can be very very proactive and serving um, you know we all have a, an innate part of us that desires to have purpose and I think creating targets um, is a way for us to focus our energy and feel like we have purpose 
But when we get to the end of the year, well, certainly when I get to the end of the year um, and I look at what's taken place, the list that I created at the beginning of the year, let's be realistic here. 99% of the time, the list that I created at the beginning of the year doesn't look the way I thought it would at the end of the year. Mm. And that can come in many different guises. And um, so when I refer to reflecting and creating um, for the end of 2019, I'm speaking as a, I'm encouraging us to reflect and where we see it's different step into acknowledging or seeing how the essence of what we created is still true. You know, whenever we set an intention, there's always a vibration behind that. An an intention by nature has a a purpose to it. Mm. And when we create no matter what it is that we are setting as a goal or an intention or a desire, what we think we are creating, the words that we use may hold within them a key that we're not seeing. Yes. Now, I'm I'm a list person by nature. I'll fess up right now. I've always loved lists. I find them very useful and a good way of being organized. And so historically, I have created New Year's resolution lists. Well, at the beginning of 2019, I wrote one resolution. And my resolution was that I wanted to uh, live a life of joy, Mm. that I wanted to experience and share joy so that not only would my life be filled with joy, but it would fill the life of others with joy as well. Mm. And that's a really, really simple thing to write compared with what I could have put down and have often put down in other years. And coming into December, I remembered that I had written this. And and I actually remembered I'd written it because I was tuning in to my soul and asking my soul what was the greatest thing, what was the most important thing that my soul wanted to experience in this lifetime. And what my soul brought through to me was joy Mm. and I'd forgotten that I'd written this new year's resolution and it was after this message came through from my soul I remembered and I went back and I had a look and um had I found the place I'd written it down and I was like oh my goodness I really did write that wow and Yet I can say to you that as a goal, as an intention, I could judge that and say, well, did I really create that? And I believe that I did, Mm. but I did it in such a way that what happened first was that my life brought to the surface everything that wasn't creating joy in my life Mm. wow so when I look at my list and I reflect upon what happened this year and I see that my one new year's resolution was to create joy rather than looking at that and going oh well did I succeed well, I know I do experience joy, but I also had a lot of things happen this year that I would not describe as joy at all. (laughs) Um, But what I'm choosing to do is see that as, well, it's not even a choice. It's it's a recognition. It's a realisation and awareness that actually I've spent all year 
focusing on creating it. Yes. Whether I've consciously done that or not. And so I just wanted to offer that as a starter to the conversation to if you are going and doing a bit of retrospective about the year and about the decade, because it's 2019, it's the end of the decade, or even about the millennium, you know, we have now, well, the first of January 2020 will be 20 years since the new millennium. Wow. And that's a lot of territory that we've covered. And, you know, it's, it's very easy to fall into a space where um, we can judge ourselves ill for not having lived or created what we thought we were going to live and create. And um, so I'm gently encouraging us, if we are going through that process, to actually look at it a little bit differently and see how, in fact, you may have actually been working really, really hard subconsciously and consciously at a soul level yes. to create what it is that you truly want. It, that was so, it's so beautiful when I hear you just language so well, um, the journeys of many of us and your, and your intention for 2019 that you began the year with joy and you came back to that awareness in your heart center, that that is, you know, that that was your um, soul's intention this year. And it is important for our listeners to, you know, reflect in their own lives where, where we might set these intentions and that seemingly what happens before us is not quite what we thought that intention was. And, but when we look at our lives through a more soulful lens, a more spiritual lens, a more celestial or cosmic lens, and we understand that the soul inside us, what a soul craves most is expansion, which means growth. It wants to grow and it wants to experience things and it wants to learn. And when you, you know, set the intention for joy, Sue, you, you were setting the intention that you were going to journey the roads of joy and, and the different aspects of that in your life. And, and, and also spirit or the cosmos was also conspiring with you to help you achieve that goal of removing things in your life that weren't really aligned with what you were saying you wanted to experience. And so, you know, a lot of people who tap into more um, spiritual concepts or a higher awareness or an awakening of whatever you might call that inside yourself, where you just understand that your life is meant to be more than maybe what you were previously living. And you realize that you're living in a world that can actually reflect to you and manifest with you what your soul most desires to experience. When we understand that, we, we, play in this world of our imagination and the dreams that we're dreaming, whether it's a, you know, in, in, in regular everyday life on New Year's Eve, many people set that New Year's resolution, right? Or that intention, you might say. And uh, it's really powerful to see that, that the universe is listening, number one, and that whatever we're really you know, calling out in ourselves, if we call out, we want to experience more joy or more relationship or what I noticed, Sue, is that on your intention for the new year back in 2018 for 2019, you, you intuitively knew to um, choose a, an intangible, a feeling and an internal experience you know, many of us might have on a list that we want that new car, we want a house, and those things aren't wrong either. Um, but what's interesting is when you went straight to the feeling you wanted to experience or the aspect of, of an energy that you wanted to live in your life this year, I think it, it made it even more crystal clear to you um, that the experience is showing up to mirror that back to you versus if we ask for a thing, a tangible thing in our lives, there's always a feeling and an experience inside what we're really saying. So if we want that car or that new job, or we want to take a trip somewhere in the world, and those are tangible things that we might set an intention we're also going to achieve in a new year. Underneath that is the feeling. And I think that is 
what I really also felt in that that feeling for you was pretty consistent through the whole year, even if joy in some of the life experiences you were having wasn't quite what you're experiencing. In fact, maybe the opposite where there were more challenging moments too. Right. And mm -hmm. so I think, uh, you know, we are being called in this reflection time to really think about the, the things we may actually want to achieve in the new year as goals that can be very important for many of us and the lists we like to make. But inside those lists are those intangible things that that's really ultimately what those outer things reflect to us. And if we can spend a little time you know, really discerning or feeling into what is the feeling you want to feel in this 2020 year, in this new year that we're growing into. You know, if we really can tune into that feeling, I think we will be able to more clearly see it escorting us through the experiences we're going to have in, in the new year. And I think that's really what our soul wants. And I can say, you know, from maybe there's two types of people, maybe there's two personalities, the list makers and, and the, I don't know, the free formers. I must be somewhere in the middle because I like lists and then I also like to free form. And, <laughs> but, and so I've never set that I can really think of an intention for the new year other than awareness that I really, I don't know, I guess I, I just, I had an awareness in the new year that I wanted to experience a newness and I wanted to create newness and I wanted to live some version of something new in my life um, that was a creation because I'm somebody who really likes to create things. And I think that's just always in my consciousness, but not something I ever specifically wrote down. Um, and it's interesting that we both journeyed what we really asked for. Because I think throughout my last 20 years, if I think back to the year 2000, I've been creating a lot over the last 20 years. Um, actual things like books and CDs and courses and messages. And, and then I've also created my family since, uh, since the year 2000. I had a child born in 2000 and 2001 and 2004. So um, it's been a big two decades of creation for me. And I think, I think it's, it helps me listening to you, Sue, to put a feeling where I'm really calling into the feeling I want to feel as I'm creating more. Um, and I can add on to that dream in the new year of 2020. And I'm really ready for some new experiences and to, for my soul to expand again in this next year and to grow and to learn. And I guess I'm saying a lot of things. I'm very thoughtful right now. I feel very thoughtful. I think maybe because it is the end of a decade and we're opening up a new one and, mm -hmm. um, and, and a new experience. But um, really think about, like you were saying, Sue, I think, but it's not for us to look back and judge ourselves harshly because if we look back with a reflection on what we were learning about in the last year, in the last decade or the last two decades even um, since the year 2000. If we look back in our life and we look at that journey, what have we been learning about ourselves? And if we are souls that want to experience expansion and growth, that's why we come is to evolve and to learn and grow and understand ourselves as a soul, as a spirit in a human wrapping then we're all very successful because we've all for sure had a tremendous amount of experiences and, and experiences are guaranteed in 2020. We are all going to experience a lot of energy in the new year and in this new decade. And we're going to see innovations and inspirations and crumblings of some old structures. We're going to see a lot in our outer world shape shift and grow and, and new things emerge and old things fall away. But if we, if we look back and, and we see ourselves as creators, as souls having experiences here in this physical world. And if our one job is to grow and emerge and evolve and expand, and that's what souls love to do, a happy soul is a soul that's evolving and expanding, then maybe you can pull out some of your themes of you know, what were the things that you were growing the most about? I mean, I can definitely say, as I just said, I had my kids in the early 2000s. And I really learned how to be a parent and I'm still learning 
but I learned a lot over the last 20 years um, in that journey. And it's deepened me as a person, um, now guiding the lives of other people, um, having come through that experience and, and it's enriched me, I think, as a teacher and as an educator and as somebody who shares messages in the world. Um, I think that that was important for my growth path and what's opening to me in the 2020. So, and, you know, again, like you, Sue, I can't say that every experience in that parenting desire that I had has been always beautiful and always joyful and always easy. In fact, it was often the times that have been very challenging or difficult or confusing that I've grown the most. And if you remember that we're feeding our soul, we're nourishing our souls, that's why we come, is to expand and to ex have experiences, then I know I've been enriching my soul um, just by a willingness to so courageously embrace the experiences I've had. And then I, that I get to witness the themes of where I've grown and uh, self-expression is another big one for me over this last year, over this last decade, and over the last two decades. I think I published my first book, Sue. One of them might have been in 99, but I definitely remember 2000. So I published two books that came out almost back to back, and they were right around um, the new millennium, right? The new the two, year 2000. And so I started there as a virtually unknown author in 2000 and a very beginning parent and now in nearly 2020 I have grown children and I have many publications and I've been exploring expressing myself in a variety of different mediums on film in podcasts in written messages and published works and so and there's been a lot of journeying in that process and a lot of growing and a lot of successes and a lot of struggles and, um, and I'm grateful for all of it. And I think that's something that we're invited in, in December as we enter this process of like, what are you grateful for of your themes? If you go back one year, two years, five years, 10, um, you know, what are people listening to this podcast? What are your themes? What are some things that your soul has cycled in to experience and you've seen yourself journey it, and not just one loop, but a second loop or 10 loops of it. Uh, I could definitely say that self-expression has been a theme that has, that has um, emerged in me over and over and over again. It must be a life path theme that I'm working through. And, and I look forward to the new innovations and the new technologies and the new connections and community that I'm gonna meet in the next decade uh, that are gonna help me and support me to experience more of that, that I, I can't even imagine it right now how beautiful that's going to be. And, and I know for you, Sue, you know, you're on the cusp too of, of sort of reflect, certainly reflecting on where you've been and, and exploring where, where you're moving into just like all the rest of us. It's an extraordinary time. It, it is. And I, and I think that's really why um, we've elected to focus on this for our end of year topic. It's, you know, as I said, we do, all of us create an element of reflection naturally at the end of the year. And yet I wouldn't necessarily choose that as a topic for our podcast, but I, you know, we were talking just beforehand and um, I think we both really felt that, um, you know, we are in a significant time in our lives and, um, you know, we're moving into a new decade and we're living in a time on the planet where there is lots of things up for grabs. There's lots of uh, uncomfortable energy taking place for a lot of people. People are beginning to see and become aware of things that make them uncomfortable and that's creating turbulence. And, you know, the word 2020, you know, by itself, uh, that that word evokes an imaginary response, which is vision. You know, we have 2020 vision is what you call perfect vision with your sight. Well, the word 2020 and the year 2020 thematically carries that energy of a clear vision. And if you're seeing things clearly and perhaps seeing things clearly for the first time, 
that can carry um, a huge transformation with it. And so when we're looking at where we've been and allowing that just to be what it is, that can pre it does predetermine the flavor or the sight with which we might imagine or create what we want to do moving forward because you know naturally um i don't know about you but when i've had experiences in my life particularly ones that have repeated that have been unpleasant and uncomfortable um my desire has been to be create differently <laughs> I don't want to create that anymore. You know? <laughs> so that in itself, it's a flavor. It, it adds, it adds a, a flavor to the way I frame my intents or the way I am open or not open to receive and create. And so whilst it's great and positive to see where our lives have not gone as planned, where we have created habits um, and experiences that have not been pleasant, have not served, have been to our detriment, it takes courage to be open to receive, to see clearly who you are and how you can choose to create freely and openly from your heart centre without being limited or constricted by the pain of the past. And coming to a place of clear vision can only happen if we allow ourselves to be open to do exactly as I just said, mm. to, to allow ourselves to release and free ourselves from the burden of the past and so when I talk about reflecting on the year that's been and then in creating an intention to move forward you hit on it yourself just before when you highlighted that um, in 2019 the one intention I had was an expression an experience of a feeling not an emotion because the vibration of all emotion in its c form is is not um emotion we think of emotion as something that kind of goes up and up and down so we, we go through states of emotion and they can be extreme um when i use the word joy i'm i'm looking at the kernel of that so the kernel of joy the experience of being joy and what that brings to my life. And that doesn't mean that um, we're all going to run around like chooks with our heads chop off and stop being practical. I'm, I'm actually not talking about that at all because if you understand what your key driver is, if you understand what motivates you on a soul level, what that expression is that you most desire, you will then naturally create a template for practical things that align with that. So, I know I want to experience a life of joy. What are the practical things that I can create that will help support that process? Mm. And it's a two part thing. There's things in my life that are going to come up to be seen where I recognize and experience that I'm not having any joy with that. Right. And that doesn't necessarily mean that those things in themselves are wrong either, by the way, but, there is something in me in that experience when I'm not aligning to my heart. Mm. And that can be um, an internal shift, like bringing myself back to that point, that place in myself where I'm living that experience from a heart-centered place and keeping my heart-centered principle. Or it can be that it's just actually something that makes me not happy. I'm not joyful. It's not in alignment with who I truly am. So what I'd like to invite our audience to consider as we come through into this year of, of, of clear vision is when you're making those New Year's resolutions, when you're having those reflections about your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, 
to actually consider what lies beneath the surface. You know, if you're somebody who loves and feels inspired by creating a list or an intention for what you want to create, it's actually a really great year to do that. It's a, in terms of the vibrations on the planet, um, if you have any interest in something like astrology, you'll know there's lots of astrology around this as well. Um, just by the nature of the fact that we're in a point on the planet where we're, new opportunities are going to be opening up. Whenever there is change, there is loss, but there is also opportunity. Mm. So, you know, um, the, the offer of today's discussion is for us to explore how we create and how we can set our intentions around what we create for moving forward in such a way that we are more in tune with um, the real essence of what it is that we're looking for. Is it love? You know, is it joy? Is it peace? Is it all of those things? And if so, how can we generate our intentions? How can we generate our practical lists of how that's going to look and retain a connection to that space? Mm. That's so beautiful, Sue, because, you know, like I said, as somebody who is not per se specifically sat down and been a New Year's resolution person and and we're talking about beyond New Year's resolutions that often even in, in our regular everyday lives are things that fall away pretty quickly um, and, and we get back to our old ways or, you know, not everybody's able to carry those through. I'm really, really feeling in your energy today and in, in what you're expressing through your messages is re I'm really feeling the feeling that if you can tune into the essence um, and the feeling of how you want to feel as you walk through your life in 2020, right? There, there may be those specific goals that are counterparts to the feelings and to the essence that we're stating to ourselves, that we're claiming that we want to be experienced. And our next soul's expansion, that we're putting our order into the universe of like, this is what I'd like to have, please. And, and in 2020, I think it's really, especially this year, is going to be a big year. There's a lot of energy around this year. And, um, and I even feel the word renaissance comes to me that in this next decade, we're going to have a renaissance of creation and creativity, kind of like the time of Da Vinci. We're going to hmm. see artists and innovators and um, a lot of beautiful things be created at the same time we see some other structures that are no longer serving humanity on a collective level are going to fall away. But what I'm really hearing in your messages, it's so it's, I'm, I'm very much valuing um, this new insight that uh, I'm, I'm feeling from you is if you, if you choose an essence and a feeling that you know you're attracted to, that you want to experience more of in 2020, it will be something that is more true for you, um, that everything else will kind of template itself from. And at the end of the year, like you, Sue, is it will still be true for you as a feeling essence and guide in your journey once you've journeyed that 12 month cycle, then if you, I'm, I'm just making a decision, then if you just make a list and say, I want a new car, I want a new job. I think when it's seeded or kerneled, like you said, right, the kernel in there was joy. And that, then that informed all your other experiences throughout the year, right? The struggles and the gifts and the blessings. Um, yes. I, I think when we focus on that essence, that it's, that it's never something that we look back and said that we did wrong. It's just things that we journeyed and had experiences so that we could learn about more about what that essence of that energy or that feeling is. And I think a lot of us might want to, you know, are, are, we're craving something different. I think we can't live up to the measures of success in some ways that the outer world keeps demanding of us with the, the pace and the race of time you know, the, the, the things that have added to our days, our daily lives, you know, it's very different here on this planet than it was a hundred years ago. So our to-do lists are so long and our devices are many, and we've got so many distractions in the world going on. And 
and things we're seeing more what happens to one of us happens to all of us we're all affected since we're all interconnected through the internet and the systems of technology that we have and so there is this sense of like you know in the past we might have been conditioned to judge ourselves even if we look back there's a tendency to judge did i accomplish my goals and if they were just things and we weren't tapped into the feeling inside them then it's it's almost an exercise that's that's set up to tell us that we we didn't do the things or we didn't accomplish the things that we wanted to or maybe not enough of them um, but really if you if you focus on a feeling that you're wanting to be experiencing more of throughout the year or in essence you're going to hit the mark of that throughout the year and it's going to mirror itself back to you in many ways um, and bring in experiences and we can have goals i'm not saying not to have goals but if you can find the feeling in the goal like you were saying uh, I think we're going to have a different measure of success at the end or end of 2020, at the end of this decade. Because if the goal is, say, for instance, Sue, say it's unity consciousness, say it's more peace on the planet, say it's more service to others or service to goodness and the light rather than service to self, right? Or um, all these things are feelings that you could see begin to template and manifest in our in our personal lives and in the global structures. And, uh, and I think that when we set ourselves up to just review things that we've done or goals that we've achieved or didn't achieve, we're missing um, that important life lens, that soul lens that is inside us saying, but wait, didn't you see? <laughs> that when we had this, like my experience that I mentioned on an earlier podcast, we had a dishwasher leak in our house. It damaged our floors. It damaged our kitchen. And in the whole journey of that, that has been many months long, a new kitchen is going to be the result, right? And so we've been very supported by the earth and of course our insurance company and all the different people we've had to talk to, to resolve that particular experience. But if my, my ultimate creation, my ultimate goal, I guess, inside myself, the essence that I love feeling that is kind of a constant prayer inside me and a constant intention is to create, I guess I created a new kitchen, right? And so we are always creating what we're feeling and what our essence is, whether we put it on a piece of paper or we hold it in our heart or we just think about it a lot. We are manifesting that and we're really being called in this new year to manifest with a greater clarity and to extract some of the value and the marrow of maybe creating in the past two decades or five decades or whatever it's been, maybe not as consciously. And so you were manifesting that whole time to give your soul the soul food it needs to grow. That's why it's here. And you have done that. And you can look at all the growth op opportunities that you've had, the schools you've been to, the friends you've had, the people you've known, the places you visited. All of that has been very, very important for your soul's expansion and making you who you are today. And now as we are on, you know, just the last what, Sue, like 30 days or less um, before we cross over into a brand new year and a brand new decade. And if this is really true, this energy, and I'm hearing some different teachers and speakers and authors and um, intuitives talking about this, there is kind of this energy that I've heard many people talking about at some level of a higher level of creation and a much greater um, experience of kind of art and innovation and calls to work together, while at the same time, we're gonna see the highlights of where we're not unified, where we're not peaceful, where we're not creating in the highest good. So whatever we as a collective humanity is also trying to manifest in this new decade, we're gonna witness where we're not those things. We're gonna experience more where we have not built the proper scaffolding to support that new experience that we're saying that we desire. So it's really powerful for me to hear you, Sue. I really love how you are sharing that about the feeling and the intention, how you offered up in this conversation, your, your human intention and your soul's intention to experience more joy in 2019 and how throughout the year, 
you've, you've been able to either as you've been going through it or certainly looking back, witness how that was moving through your life and creating your experiences to help set you on a better course to experience more joy, even if there were challenges along the way. And when you have this perspective, things have so much more meaning and you can speak from a place of reverence and respect and honoring all that you just experienced because it was all part of helping you to grow. Um, and not just from a human perspective of personal growth, but a soul perspective of expanding um, at the deepest of levels, your light essence. And that's a kind of growth that some of us can tune into and some of us can't, but that is what's happening inside us is that we are a being of light that wants to expand in the, in the experience of constant creation. And that is what we've, we've had a big sandbox the last you know, year and the last several decades. And 2020, I think Sue is gonna be the sandbox of all sandboxes uh, to create in, to play in, and to really focus our energies more committedly and more consciously of really choosing and scripting into our life the feeling that we want to experience. And, uh, and it's, it, that is really powerful um, to say and to share in this conversation and to invite, you know, people who find this podcast, who listen to our podcast, and they are thinking about what is the feeling, the dominant energy, the vibration that I really want to feel more of, and I want to see it showing up in me for me um, this year in a very recognizable, accessible way. And that means when you're praying for that and you're intending that, that anything in the way of that is going to show up. And so we have to get more comfortable with letting the discomfort show up. And then we also get to celebrate the fun ways and the, and the fun sandbox that wants to show up in, in our creations to experience more of the joy of whatever that is. And so I think we're going to get more comfortable. We're going to be in like, you know, a master's level or PhD level of personal growth this next year of really learning how to get comfortable with ourselves as creators and realizing that we're creating all of it at some level. And, and that I think is what, where some people have known this, or if you're listening to this and you're just starting to stick, stick a couple of baby toes into the water of this greater awakening process, you know, wherever you are on that spectrum of experience, we are all learning how to be this in a bigger way. And 2020 is definitely going to give us the tools and the skills and the amplification of our thoughts and our feelings and our words and our actions. They're really going to show up bigger in our lives to mirror to ourselves what it is that we're actually creating. And we're going to get to see that a front row seat in our own life, which can be very exciting. And some people hearing like this, hearing this today, it might be a little daunting. Um, but either way, the soul inside you is ready. The soul inside you has like a picture. You remember like the Snoopy shows or whatever, where he was the flying ace or something. You know, I picture yes. you know, the soul inside you is definitely, uh, you know, getting its pilot goggles on. It's got its jacket and its scarf and it's ready to fly into some new experiences on a bigger level and for many of us on a more conscious level. And I think that's gonna be the game changer in 2020 that more of us as a group, as a whole, as a community in the world are gonna be waking up to this in our own individual lives, but also looking at other people and realizing they're waking up too, and they're consciously creating too, and they're wanting to design their lives too, and their soul's experiences. So. It, it is. It's definitely a huge, huge, you know, experience that we're moving into in the year 2020. And I think this t December 2019 now gives us a nice, maybe I'll call it a soft bridge, but it's a nice bridge to start gaining some of this language with yourself to be compassionate with yourself and appreciative of yourself and the courage it takes to be a soul in human form on the planet right now when so much is happening and so much change is ushering in these opportunities that you mentioned, Sue, that the you know, change and through the shifts and the loss, there's also opportunities. And I think we're gonna see a lot of everything 
um, in the new year and have a lot of opportunities to grow and to, and to just seize the opportunity to consciously grow. I think that's going to be in the background of everything that's unfolding is the opportunity we have to consciously be a participant in the growth we see happening and in the learning we're doing and in the artistic and self-expression unfolding. So it, it is really, truly a powerful time. Yeah. yeah and um, thank you. No, that's, that's really rich and I um, really resonate with, with what you're sharing there and what the key word that came through to me as you were speaking was fulfillment. Yes. And really what we're talking here, uh, how, how do I find fulfillment and what is fulfillment to me and how do I find that in a time and a place on a planet where so much is fluid, so much is changing and just sometimes it's quite disruptive and a lot of what I used to experience as concrete, I can rely on this, I can rely on that, mm -hmm. is no longer the case. It's up for grabs. And, you know, it's going to be really important for everybody to rediscover for themselves how they fulfill themselves. What does that mean? And... So when we have an intention to create, um, you know, you, you, there's a hierarchical thing. I think it was Abraham Maslow who um, wrote this hierarchy yeah. around needs. So like you've got your, your needs, wants, desires. Uh, I can't remember what the whole list is. But, you know, I, I may have a need, and I do. We all have a need to provide food to put on our table. We all have a need to find shelter in a way that suits us, that works for us. Um, education, you know, they're primary building blocks of our existence that we are dependent on. So, you know, creating uh, an intention or tuning into yourself to be clearer on what your primary drivers are from a heartfelt space doesn't preclude the provision of those things it actually potentially enhances mm. you to be able to create them because I, i'm sure that i don't know how weird other people are but i know that there's been times in my life where i've really wanted something yeah. and it just hasn't happened and um you know people talk about things like cosmic timing and stuff like that but I think now that why those things didn't get created were because they weren't actually in line with what my soul wanted. They weren't actually going to fulfill my, fulfill me in the way that I thought. And then there's been other times where I have created what I wanted and it hasn't been what I thought it was going to be. And it hasn't fulfilled me in the way that I wanted. So, you know, when, when we are imagining and creating what we think we want in our life, it's surprising how much of that is driven by expectations that we have that have been built upon a society that dictates what certain things are that are important. And I'm, I'm not even talking about finding the difference between, you know, um, the importance of family versus the importance of having a brand new car. I'm not even talking on that level because mm. not everybody is going to have a family in the traditional way that people have, have brought that up as a topic. And, you know, I have to say Christmas is, uh, in the essence of Christmas is a, a beautiful thing because it's actually about birth. It's actually about the birth of consciousness. So um, in its essence, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But we do, like everything else, we wrap it in these packages of expectation. And um, so, you know, family in itself may be something that you feel that you want in your life that fulfills you. What is it beneath family? 
that it is that, that, that you are attracted to? Well, it's love. So getting into the absolute essence of what it is that, that you, you find fulfilling that expands you right down to nitty gritty Hmm. will then free you you know it might be that you've spent all your life feeling like you have to be connected to your family because that's the way we traditionally express love but it's actually in your, your personal circumstance not serving you you may be in a personal situation where you have someone who is narcissistic who is not for your best interest who is only self-serving in which case you are not actually experiencing what your heart desires. You're not experiencing what your soul is looking for. And it's perfectly okay and it's perfectly acceptable for you to get to the essence of that and recognize that what you are seeking is love, but not love in an unbalanced way, love in its pure original intention, which can be a human experience. And therefore, you have an intention to create a family that for you is the essence of love. Now, that family that you create in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2030 may not be your genetic family. It may be, but it could be family in a way that you've never known what family is before. Mm. So I'm really encouraging us at this moment in time to begin exploring how we create, how we create our world, how we create the building blocks for what we then manifest. Mm. Absolutely. If you are in a situation where you need to put food on that table, you know, put it on your list, have it as an intention of something that you want to create. However, tapping into yourself not even about, um, you know, when I go for jobs, I think about things that I like, that, that the sort of places I've worked in before and what worked for me and what didn't work for me, what I appreciated. You know, do I want to work in a big company? Do I work, want to work in a small family? Do I want to work in a team? Do I want to work as an individual? They're all very sensible, practical things. But again, I'm really coming back to the absolute essence of everything because if you're clear in your essence of what it is that you're wanting to create, that what's going to fulfill you, when you then sit down and have the intention to create a job or create an income or create a car or create a form of transport, what you are going to align with, what you're going to plant the seed for is going to be so much closer to what it is that fulfills you mm. that you're actually going to get everything you wanted and more. And it takes practice because we're talking about quite a process that a lot of people have many layers to unwrap around. And why I'm highlighting it is because, as I said, the energy of 2020 is one of clear vision. Mm -hmm. So it's about stripping away those layers, allowing them to fall away and seeing clearly, really clearly, with proper vision for the very first time. And we are all going through this. Even the most advanced, enlightened, beautiful beings living on the earth at this time, your Mother Teresa type people. Yeah. Are all going through a shift in awareness, are all going through this same experience. And so this is for everybody. This message is a universal message that we have an incredible opportunity in 2020 to allow ourselves to be open, to see clearly, but to do it in such a way that we're tapping into what truly fulfills us. Because the alternate, if you don't want to go down that path, is you're going to see things clearly anyway but you're not going to have that essence within you, that core to know what it is, to experience what it is that fulfills you. And that's where we find ourselves flapping around with our heads like a chook, feeling anxious and frightened and confused and lost. And it's a choice. Mm. Yes. 
Yeah. I mean, it really is a choice to embrace, I guess, uh, the opportunity to see with such clarity. I was thinking when you were talking, we may have mentioned this before, but I don't think so, that in the number 2020, there's two zeros, right? Which in a way look like eyes, look like, they certainly look like, you know, vision, you know, seeing through those zeros, seeing through those circles, those spheres of experience. And I do think we are being given the opportunity to really choose our experiences as much as we can when we live from that place and we intend from the place of essence and that energy. So Sue, while we started this call um, talking about reflection and manifestation and creation and appreciation and those important things, it, we've distilled it though, those very important um, energies and things in our lives down to um, the vibration of the essence of what we really want to feel and what we really want to experience. And when, when what we're saying and intending that we want in our thoughts, feelings, actions, behaviors, and, and the things that we do every day, when that lines up, right, with when all that we show up in our daily lives every day, when that matches our intention of what we're saying we want, then fulfillment is the outcome every time. Even though the experiences and the circumstances look very different, fulfillment will be delivered to us every time when we're, when we're intending from that place and then we're living from that place, no matter what's showing up that we can feel that that's another experience of that intention and that essence that we really wanted to know more about and grow through in some way. And we can find fulfillment in the most challenging of circumstances because often it invites us to rise to be the better, best selves we've ever been in our lives. And if it's inviting you into more, a more challenging version of yourself, we can appreciate that too because you want to see that part of yourself that just is asking for more growth. It's asking for more experience. It's asking for more learning and nurturing. So there's a blessing in all of it, even when it looks messy, isn't it? So like yeah. even, even when our lives do get dis disrupted or the unexpected happen or, um, or beautiful things unfold too, like we are being made richer by being here, by being alive we are being enriched. And when we can have appreciation for that journey and we can consciously make the choice to understand that we're making choices, that we're choosing our opportunities to grow, instead of them happening to us, we can intend more of what we want to experience so that we can experience what we're actually desiring versus getting a lot of what we have in our lives by some version of default. So we all know now that obviously computers have default settings that if you don't set it to do a particular thing that you actually want it to, it's going to you know, operate from the default setting because it has to function. And we have to function from our intentions and our essence and our feeling states. And so that is how this universe is listening to most of everything that's happening in our lives. It's listening to our essence and our energy and our feeling and our vibration. And so if we don't want, you know, the default setting uh, to keep manifesting in our lives, we have to get in there and consciously choose what we really want to be having. And so I, for one, am taking definitely some notes from just the messages that you shared, Sue, in such a beautiful way today to take my, um, I would call me a drifter because I'm definitely somebody who likes to create and, and, and do things and manifest things and experience life in that way. But I think I want to add to what I'm doing with a more of a feeling vibration of how am I feeling as I create? How am I feeling as I'm self-expressing? And I want to feel myself as the version of me that I really want to enjoy in 2020. And I want to spend time feeling that essence of me being itself alive in this world, expressing in this world. And I think that that is a, is a game changer for me, really, I would say. And then I'm really going to take that and, and um, consciously create from that perspective and I'm very excited about 2020 for you and for me and for all of us. I think we're going to grow exponentially 
as a human as a as a humanity we're going to grow and uh but i think the more and more of us that are tapping into this awareness that we can choose and choose these opportunities to grow in the direction that we are interested in that we desire that we want more of i think we'll get a lot less um, experiences that seem completely unrelated to our lives that seem to happen by at random uh, and are more shocking I might say or confusing to us because if you know the vibration you've chosen and something shows up you must you can recognize that this must be some aspect like you sue of the joy I asked to experience more of this year right when something's showing up you'll have a lens through which to see it because you can say that was my that was my core request. That was my core intention. And this is obviously showing up to tell me something and teach me something about joy that I really wanted to know. And then things seem a lot less random and a lot less confusing um, and even chaotic a bit as other things crumble in the world. And not everybody's awake to this awareness that we do create our lives. So, you know, the more we can give ourselves permission to learn new things every time i talk to you sue and i we do these podcasts i learn something from you and i learn from everything that i do in my day and my animals teach me things every day and i think we do as souls desire to be lifelong learners and um you know there's many things we could say about the conditioning we've had as a humanity that we do things and we achieve a goal and that that's like a finite experience and that the growing on that is over like you get the certificate for the class or you know you finish a course or you graduate from a particular school but really we're we're designed to be lifelong experiences experiencers and lifelong learners and so we're growing all the time and i think 2020 is inviting us to see the new growth opportunities that we have and the amazing growth opportunities that we've just we're wrapping up in this last de decade in this last year and um and the time of the season you say talk about that you know this this holiday season the christmas season um for many of us is about the birthing of, of uh, this higher consciousness and this connection with ourselves and this connection with ourselves as a creator being and fulfillment comes from when you understand you just begin to understand that you can actually you know um start drafting the intentions for your life you can plant those seeds for the life you want to live and we experience fulfillment when our soul recognizes that the flower or the fruit has manifested from the seed it planted. That's when we feel really fulfilled and we say, oh, I recognize you. You're the, the, you're the fruit of my dream. And it could be somebody with a, who you know, manifested a big company or a successful product or a connection that they'd always wanted. You know, we, it could be any one of those things, but we're the seed planters and then we're the ones who get to harvest that, that, that creation. And that's us. In 2020, we're already right now planting those seeds. We've been for some time now. We're planting these seeds for what we want to experience in this new year. And we get to be more of a conscious witness to ourselves, journeying the things that we said we wanted to experience. So those people, places, things, resources, tools, education, all those things are going to be coming into your life experience. Um, the fabulous ones and the challenging ones but all to help you with that greater exploration of who you really are. And I think that's really powerful that 2020 is gonna amplify that year of clear vision and that year of clear sight. We're all gonna be looking through the zeros in, in 2020, appearing at our life and being witness observers of what we're creating. And the blessing is that we get to journey it in some ways together on these podcasts and in the communities that you know we participate in however we do that and it is just miraculous and i think we get to really just non-judgmentally compassionately and lovingly look back at our previous you know experiences and creations over the past year and the past timelines and what we newly want to create looking through that new lens of your life that's going to be unfolding 
in the new year. And it's so, it's so beautiful. All of it. The whole thing is beautiful because that's what we came to experience, the creation of it itself. We're here as an aspect of creation. And, you know, Sue, I just, I value so much my connection with you and the wisdom you share with our community. Did you have anything you wanted to share before we close out this conversation today as a message, as a parting message today? Uh, thank you. That was very, very generous of you. And uh, I, I too have found it deeply enriching holding these podcasts with you on average about once a month and tuning in with you and being guided by source, by soul, by God, goddess, to share whatever is there for the audience, for the listeners and for ourselves as well. We, we learn and grow as we share this, this experience with other people. And uh, so thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I've really, really enjoyed the richness that I've experienced in my own soul growth from doing these podcasts and it brings me it brings me a lot of joy there you go there's that key yeah. word of our conversation it it's been one of the things in my life this year where i have created joy mm. where i have experienced the joy of just sharing at a soul level and and giving that freely um for others to share and experience also so thank you, and thank you for the people who have uh, taken the time to listen in and to capture and experience whatever gems or pearls or challenges these conversations have highlighted for you. And um, so I think what I'd like to end with, is, there's two things. First is uh, clearly our conversation, our channel conversation today this podcast has been an open invitation for all the listeners to, to take half an hour, five minutes, or over a period of time, tune in and take a new look, a, a new facet, a new expression of what it is that you create and how you create and, and who you are. Who is it beneath the surface? What is it that they're wanting that's going to bring true fulfillment what's your soul saying to you what's what's behind those goals behind the, those intentions so what is it that you want to create in 2020 what it is that you want to create in the next decade how do you want to live who do you want to be your authentic self the full expression of your soul being in human form the invitation is there and this is a fantastic period in time for you to take that mantle up if you want to. So that's the first thing. The, the second thing is that uh, 2020, we've always said it's, it's a new decade and it's a platform for us to move forward. So I'd also like to acknowledge that many of us have faced some incredible challenges in the last decade a huge life upheaval suffering pain as well as upliftment and expansion and we've all worked jolly hard we have busted our butts and and sometimes busted our butts Sheer, purely just to survive to the next day that this this last decade has been really full-on for many 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 of us and we've all been stretched and challenged and many of us have grown and expanded but it's been hard work and so I want everybody who's listening to if, if you only do one thing this christmas this new year listen to yourself just spend three minutes with yourself and thank you thank yourself thank your soul thank your being thank your body for carrying you through this hmm. and 
love yourself. Just, just give yourself permission to say to yourself that I love you and I thank you for being here with me, for taking this journey with me and acknowledge to yourself, to your own inner being, to your own inner child, how hard that has been. And give yourself a hug, basically. And I know this is all very, you know, what we call hippy dippy, yeah. but <laughs> you know, I, I, I really know that um, how hard it's been. I have, you know, had. I look back at the last ten years and I think, oh my goodness, <laughs> what a ride, you know. Yeah. And and having done that, give yourself permission to move forward. You don't have to go back to those experiences in a painful way. In order to do this experience that we've talked about today, where you're tapping into how you feel and listening to what, what on a soul level, what, what at, a, at a core level is it that fulfills you? What is it that, what's all that hidden driver that you have that, that motivates you to set all your goals and your targets and to strive for success and whatever that looks like in your life? You don't have to take yourself back into a state of suffering and pain and relive those experiences and hold yourself to those experiences in the place of judgment that you've had in your life up to this point. You are who you are today Mm. because of those experiences. And while many of them may have been uncomfortable and some of them may have been downright miserable or terrifying, they've moulded you into the shape of who you are now so that you can move forward, so that you can take full opportunity of the harvest. Because 2020 truly marks the beginning of the harvest for humanity. And it's a long harvest, so it's not all going to appear in January 2020. It's not all going to appear in 2020. It's not even all going to appear by 2025. It's a long harvest. But you are here now and you are ready and you're able to begin harvesting. Mm. So I think that's everything that I have that I like to take the moment for people and just acknowledge it. we are literally at the end of the ones. So, you know, if you think of the 1900s, the 20th century, it was all, you know, 1920, 1930. There's always a one in there somewhere. Well, as of 2020, we're in a whole new level of mastery. Yes moving from illumination to mastery. Hmm. Yes, and that word reflects the power that's being returned inside us to step up and claim that and to be that in the world. We, we get to be the change we want to be. We get to be the light we want to be. We get to be the appreciation and the love that we know we're meant to be. And so there's so much opportunity coming through this new energy and this, these new opportunities for change inside us, for growth inside us. And um, I just, I adore your reflections and your insights, Sue. They're always so rich and they really, you know, they, you first hear them in the words, but then, you know, if you listen to them again and, and you just really tune in deeper to what you're saying. There's so much energy in what you're saying that's so supportive for all of us in the journey. And that's, that's what we aim to do here with Whole Soul School and Foundation is to give you that energy of courage and give you that energy of positive expectation and to give you that soul empowerment through the energy of our words and our expression and the things we share here that you feel more confident and competent and capable and divinely guided in your journey, that you have everything inside you that you need to be who you are and to emerge who you really are, which we're always discovering deeper and deeper layers of what that means, which is the beautiful gift of having life, of being here at this time. 
And so we are, we're invited to step up, to listen for how we can be a little brighter in our own lives. And if that's not more joy for you right now, you know, maybe that's just loving yourself more and accepting yourself more and accepting who you are. If somebody in your life wasn't accepting of you or wasn't supportive of you, it's time that we give these things to ourselves and ask spirit for support and our guides for guidance and to let that inspiration and that light and that consciousness move through us so that we can be somebody who participates in more positive change in the world. And when we start to turn the light on that we, are, we can create change versus feeling like life is happening to us, right? Being the victim of our life versus the creator of our life, that's a big shift. And I think that's also happening right now is realizing that we have a tremendous amount of power inside us in what we think about, feel about, um, engage, embrace, participate in. And you know we are gonna have a lot more opportunity to master that further in 2020. So the mastery that we're moving in is more practicing these skills because we're going to need to on a regular basis and we're gonna get stronger. Just like any athlete or any person in a profession that they have to perform, you know, they practice daily. And we need to practice these skills of connecting with our soul and our spirit and our essence and our intentions. We are gonna get a lot of opportunities to practice that and then see what our performance is, see how we're showing up in the world. And it's just us. It's just for us. We get to see how we're showing up. And if we don't like something that we're feeling or experiencing, then we just change our intentions or we shift our energy a little bit or we call in some things that nurture us and make us feel good. And that appreciation for ourselves and giving ourselves a hug and loving ourselves is another powerful tool that you know, we have to find ways that work for us to do that, to show up in that new way with ourselves. But that is the time, is to start knowing ourselves more fully again, so we can experience that fulfillment that you're talking about, Sue, and that birthing of a higher consciousness inside ourselves. We're designed to feel good all the time. And we're growing out of some timelines of experience where that just wasn't always part of our journey but we're being summoned back into feeling good all the time. And then using our life, our whole mind, body, spirit to serve others and to serve this creation of a more positive planet and a more beautiful world. And, you know, it's going to take all of us. It's going to take all of us rising in that awareness that we are the change makers and we're the ones that are creating this world. And we have a lot of power as a soul and as a light on this planet at this time to create that positive change. So that's what we're summoning you into in this conversation. Where can you create that positive love and appreciation and positive change in your life where you can more clearly express yourself and love yourself while you're being a participant in this global project and in your life today? How do you want to feel inside yourself as you cross over into the January 1 of 2020 and, and live out this new next year? And what are your feeling intentions that you want to bring through? And it is so exciting. So I'm excited to be journeying with all of you. I know, Sue, you're excited to be part of this and this community here. Uh, at Whole Soul School and Foundation. I want to invite anyone, if you want to listen to this podcast, um, you can find us on YouTube, which is, you know, you search our name, Whole Soul School and Foundation. You can find our website that has a lot of our offerings. We have blog posts. We have um, inspirational poems from our mystic poet, Flower Diamond. All of that can be found, these videos and podcasts at wholesoulschoolandfoundation.org. And you can find us on YouTube and Spotify and a myriad of wonderful places. Just keep searching Whole Soul School and Foundation and I think you'll find us. And I want to invite people listening to this podcast and any of our other Mind, Body, Spirit fit Fitness podcasts with Sue Wells 
you can find her amazing fairy cosmology podcast where she's sharing just deep and inspiring and timely messages uh, to nurture all of us in just a really beautiful, amazing way, Sue. So people can find you uh, on Anchor and Spotify. And are those connected with some other podcast sources? But if at least if they go to Spotify or Anchor, they can find Fairy Cosmology. Is there anywhere else to mention? Uh, yes, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. I can't even remember half of them, to be honest. Oh, yeah. If you, yeah. if you, definitely um, Spotify, they're really easy to find there. And if you go to Anchor and go to Fairy Cosmology in, on the Anchor uh, platform, it mm -hmm. actually tells you um, what other platforms you can find the podcast on, I believe. So That's yes, check it out. And um, I do uh, podcasts around about once or twice a month at the moment. And um, obviously I'm speaking through from the creational fairy elemental perspective but every topic is unique as marie will testify yeah. <laughs> and yeah. every topic is unique so there's plenty of rich things to choose from there yes definitely it's very rich and uh, if you're looking for a little doses of inspiration and positive support while you're making this journey um like we all are you know fairy cosmology is definitely something to spend time with it's just fabulous and i will um, I'll pull those some of those links and put that for, to find Sue and Fairy Cosmology. I'll make it easy and put it in the description section. So you can just click there. And we just thank you. We thank all of you for joining us and, um, and for being a part of this global vision of positive energy and great things in 2020. And we wish you a very beautiful, light-filled December 2019. And we will see you again in January 2020. Uh, Sue and I will host another podcast on the other side of Janu January 1st, 2020. So have a wonderful holiday season, everybody. We send you lots of love and blessings. Bye-bye, everyone. See you, everybody. Thank you.